the strange angel of being. I kept scrolling past the TV series Strange Angel on CBS All Access last week. I watched the trailer and really wasn't that interested in yet another series having to do with Luciferianism or magical thinking. That's just not in the mood. Later, after exhausting all other viewing options, I finally broke down and tuned in. Strange Angel is basically a recruitment film for Luciferianism, set in the 1930s with sumptuous art direction and impeccable set design. The actors are all unknowns, but the casting is excellent. The story revolves around a chemist with a rocket obsession. He wants to go to the moon and stumbles on a new kind of religion that he believes will deliver him his lunar dream. The story addresses all the common misconceptions about Luciferianism, and the practitioners are all harmlessly framed. Back in the day, way back, I had made some inquiries into this sort of belief system, reading stuff by Alistair Crowley, Madame Blavatsky, and even John Dee. It all seemed relatively harmless, even useful from a manifesting point of view, but I ended up not following up on it much because there was something a little off about it I just couldn't put my finger on. Well, after watching season one of Strange Angel, they are renewed for season two this fall, by the way, I finally found where to put my finger and realized what that splinter in my mind about it was. Intent is presented as a replacement for being. In other words, this belief system touts the will as something separate from being. Alistair Crowley's famous meme and cornerstone of these sorts of intent-centric belief systems do what thou wilt, in my view, is an error, and this is why. Yes, humans have the ability to project their will in the world and sometimes observe it bending to that will, but this is a misinterpretation of what's actually going on. A strong desire or will or focused intent has its genesis in being. You can't will something to happen without first being that thing, or, more accurately, being the thing you would naturally be in light of who you are. And if such practices of Luciferianism are guilty of anything, it's oversimplification. True, there are such elaborate tricks as spells and curses and other versions of mesmerism, all having to do with the manipulation of another's karmic timeline with repetitious symbols and chants to gain resonant entrainment. A person is susceptible to these things as they have perpetrated them on another or who are in large denial about who and what they are. Hence, any studies having to do with meditation, mindfulness, higher consciousness and such are usually attacked and discouraged by those on the black end of the magic intent spectrum, such as the inner sanctum of world cabals and the dark soft underbelly of deep state controllers who sanction such research as CIA MK ultra mind control experiments electromagnetic brain influencing, and Pavlovian television experiments, all still active today behind the curtain of government black ops programs. If you can keep a populace distracted, sick, and stressed out, it's much easier to manipulate. Okay, back to being. There is such a thing as being in congruence or in alignment with who you are being in the world. This is key because there is a complication when it comes to manifesting one's preferences or desires. There are two points of attraction around which the universe coalesces. There is the higher self, the self that is outside of time and space, and then there is the temporal self down here on the ground, all wrapped up in 3D physical timeline existence. What you may desire down here in the trenches may not align with what your true inner oversoul desires. So this is where Crowley and his ilk are wrong. They disregard this dualism, saying that whatever you want, you can have. A gross oversimplification and a misleading come on to gullible spiritual seekers. It is, in fact, how such Luciferian movements as the secret film and the generally misunderstood law of attraction got traction. Yes, the Luciferians are making a good case for non-duality, which I personally embrace as a spiritual practice, but as they effectively demonstrated in the Strange Angel TV series, it becomes a platform for the ends justifying the means, and that personal power lies beyond such concepts as good and evil. 
This ignores the fact that humans are hardwired to protect and preserve themselves, the species, living things, and life itself. Those destructive or murderous outliers are victims of extreme epigenetic factors, outright possession, or are carrying a massive load of karma. There's no need to intend anything. Just be. What you are experiencing is the way the universe is forming around who you are being, not what you want or desire. The denial or rejection of who we are is what creates conflicts, bad luck, and other life maladies. So when things get tough or difficult, the tendency is to want something other than what is going on instead of embracing that toughness or difficulty as an unacknowledged part of being that is screaming for attention. The allowing and embracing of all of what we are is what creates an abundant life because there is nothing left wanting and nothing but fulfillment. We fulfill ourselves, and the universe simply forms an abundant, fulfilled life around that. I have pointed out certain complications of living, but that doesn't mean it's complicated. It gets complicated when we separate what we think we want from who we actually are. We abandon who we are for what we want, without realizing that we already are everything we could ever desire. You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy RX. www.pureenergyrx.com.